Yes, can I eat a sandwich? Of course you can eat a sandwich. Mm. If you want to eat sandwiches, you eat sandwiches. Okay, hi everyone. Uh, yeah, so uh, back doing the vlog again today. Um, and we've got some other people here. We've got Max and we've got Colin. Mm. You probably recognise both of them from the quick quizzes we did before. Um, yeah, Max said to me the other day, uh, can you help me write a quiz? And I was like, sure, because we've got lots of quiz stuff all set up here uh, for writing the quizzes that I do. Colin regularly writes some quizzes uh, when I can't do them either. So uh, yeah, we thought we'd get started and help you with quizzing. Yeah. So yeah, should be all good. Uh, what is the audience for your quiz? That's oh. exactly where I was going to start. That's literally the starting point. So uh, yeah, tell us who your audience are. From what I've seen, they're quite older. Oh. Quite older. Near and deaf. Near and deaf. This is the Castaways lovely clientele. Yes, uh, which is uh, Milo, your aunt. Yeah, yeah. 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 So you guys just started doing the quiz there. Well, I thought the easiest thing to do is probably like break down. Oh, I was watching some Tony Hawk. Um, no. But stop, stop you there. Um, yeah, was to. Let's uh, this hex document now. Doing something new. Um, yeah, break down how we do how we usually write quizzes, or I write quizzes, and then you know, just go from there and what you need to do. So basically, whenever we write a quiz, uh, we start off with like, um, usually we start with picture round, which is usually pretty good. Good examples of picture rounds? Well, are you asking for good examples of picture rounds or easy examples of picture rounds? Because celebrities is always a very easy one. Yeah, <clears throat> celebrities is usually good. And uh, you know, you might do uh, like, I think each quiz is tailored to whoever's writing it uh, because you know you inject your own personality in, into it. So, for example, I might do a sci-fi picture round or Star Trek one or something mm. along those lines. And um, but because your audience might be of a particular nature and um, particular age range, I don't know, maybe you age. think TV shows from the sixties or something like that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's always a good one. But I think one of the rules I always seem to remember with writing quizzes is make it easier than you think it needs to be. Like. A lot of the times we've done quizzes where it's been like really, really hard, or like uh, the Jacobs usually do a quiz, which is again theirs is often targeted at a clientele, but it is yeah. pretty difficult um, to, to go through with that. So, because uh, what you got to remember is, it's people <clears throat> when they go there, yeah, they they want to go there and do a quiz, they want to test their knowledge, but also they want to go there and do fun. So, yeah, uh, it, for it to be fun, yeah. So if everything's absolutely solid hard, then it's a waste of time. Mm. So, yeah, but what have I done for uh, picture rounds in the past? Last picture round I did was, um, oh, what was, uh, landmarks. So like Canary Wharf, you know, famous buildings, Great Wall of China, stuff like that. And then throw in a couple of hard ones. Like, um, there's one I did the other day, we put in the, uh, the Runet Dome, which is, uh, it's a, uh, have you ever heard of the Runet Dome? Right. No, it's on the Runa Islands in South, uh, the South Pacific. It's basically the big concrete dome under which the US hid all of their nuclear fallout waste from weapons testing in right. the 50s and 60s. Um, Bikini but Atoll? Hey? Bikini Atoll? Is that where they did the nuclear testing? Uh, some of it, yeah, 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 it is. Yeah. Yeah. Look yeah. at that quiz knowledge right there. One point to me. But, um, yeah, but no, that, that was, it kind of made sense because that had been in the newspapers that week. So I was like, so, someone did get it. So um, that was, that was all good. One okay. that I always enjoy is biscuits or sweeties. Because yeah. I think that they span generations to a certain extent. Yeah. Oh, you know, a Bourbon or a Garibaldi mm -hmm. might be an older person's biscuit. Yeah, I love, I love the very regal way you're holding court with your sandwich there. <laughs> but um, yeah, they're always good ones. Um, what have done, done recently? Films, I always find films are a good one. You do film screenshots and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, that's pretty you know, a good one. What else? Um, I'll tell you one that I hate. Flags. Flags is horrible. Yeah. Um, dingbats. Dingbats. You know where you have it like, is it dingbats where you have a picture of um, one or more things and you have to work out from the symbols of what it actually is? Oh, like, like, like what the oldies do with the odd bats. Mm, okay, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, they're kind of like lateral thinking ones, mm -hmm. aren't they? So yeah. Oh well, I mean yeah, there's there's a fair few good different ones there. So what would you do for pictures for round one here for for your bunch? Again, you you've done this quiz like twice so far, haven't they? Uh, yeah. But you, this is your first time yeah, doing it. Yeah, first time ever. So you've never run a quiz before? No. 
So, well, we can say you have some really hard ones, but no. I reckon things like famous landmarks yeah, are a good one. Um, okay, so we'll do famous landmarks. And what we'll do is we'll just do all of this and then we'll actually write the quiz afterwards. Um, yeah, no, I was thinking like, even like Madison Square Garden. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, things like that. Yeah, little things that, you know, have, that aren't specific, like, buildings as it were, but just a place or something yeah. like that. Um, so, yeah, and like the ones that always seem to come up with, like, especially with landmarks, places like Machu Picchu and stuff like yeah. that. Um, or, uh, oh, what was the other one? Um, uh, pyramids. Pyramids, yeah, like. Because it doesn't um, matter if everyone knows them, because yeah. at least that's yeah. for something, I mean, it sounds patronizing, but at least that's one thing that that team's gonna get. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Absolutely. So, so, and actually, yeah. don't ever <laughs> underestimate how thick some teams are. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, some people can yeah, not get the most obvious of things. But yeah. Um, then what I always do, once I've done the picture round, and here's a tip that I always use for the picture round, which is uh, just traditionally when you go to a quiz, people will print out like 10 picture rounds and hand them out to the teams and stuff. I found that's a problem because if you get just two teams show up, you've wasted eight bits of paper yeah. and that much ink and stuff. So what I do now is I print them out, stick them up on the walls around the pub, so just do three of them, and then people can just stand up, take a picture of them and go back to their yeah. table and stuff. In the day of you know iPhones and stuff, people can do that as and whenever they want. So yeah, yeah. I had the, the opposite of that when I was doing one of your quizzes, mm. running it. And I printed out like 12 sheets thinking yeah. there's not going to be more than 12 teams. And I think it was a bank holiday, so there was just zillions of people. Yeah, yeah. And I had to end up swapping them around. Have you, have you got one? Have you got one? Have you finished with it? And it was just a pain. So yeah, yeah your, your approach is much better. So yeah, print them out and stick them on the wall. That's way better way of doing it. And then you go into actually speaking questions or spoken questions. Yeah. So I always start round two with general knowledge, yeah. um, which is a good way to go. And that's where the books come in. So quiz books are like an amazing resource um, for different things like these ones, I mean, these quiz books. The uh, I got these from Amazon. They're trivia ones, but like these ones are quite hard. So, um, what, what, what was this one here? Uh, what do sumo wrestlers throw into the ring prior to a match? Oh, it's um, sand or something like that. Is it sand? Oh. <clears throat> I don't know where the answers for these ones are actually. Well, oh. that's going to be a problem. Hang on, it'll be in the back here. Uh, was it round 90? See, I don't even know what sumo wrestlers would throw into a ring. Salt! It is! Oh. Look at that! Well done, oh, you. Salt. Um, what, what is the capital of Tasmania? Oh, Hobart. Uh, it is! Well done, you! I, I was going to say these are really quite hard ones, but <laughs> um, Colin's stupid and he knows all of them so far, so. Well, no, not really. In which river was Jesus baptised? Jordan. Yes! Man, you're doing amazing at this. Oh, good question for two musical. Typically, how many strings does a ukulele have? Four. Yeah, look at that. Oh, so, yeah, if your target audience are people that happen to know a lot about sumo wrestling, Jesus, and ukuleles, <laughs> then, uh, then th this would be a good start one for you. I would say, I mean, the first one in this is, in a 2003 invasion of Iraq, the US military developed a pack of playing cards to help troops identify wanted Iraqis. On which card was Saddam Hussein's Whoa. picture? Yeah, like, I remember that, that, that same round. Five. But what was that? Oh, he was the Ace of Spades. There we go. Look at that. So uh, yeah, they they are. These are fairly hard ones, but they are good. Even if you just look through and you want to find like a specific, um, like uh, a topic, if you look at something out of a different knowledge, like travel and transport is a good one. Here's one that. I've got no idea of the answer and I've never heard of it. Which singer topped the singles charts in 1973 with Can the Can? But depending on your audience, they might be like, oh, Can the Can, do you remember that, Deirdre? Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, so they might know that one. But yeah, um, but these books here, like these bigger ones, have got the, um, the complete pub quiz, more than 100,000 questions. Like you go in the general knowledge of the sort of potluck of these ones. So like Los Angeles in which US state? California. California, yeah. Well, who is Bart Simpson's younger sister? Youngest <laughs> sister. Oh, Maggie's Maggie. Maggie, yeah. Um, a banshee is a type of what? Which? And then you have to find where the answer is. I was going to say ghost. A banshee, yeah, yeah, a ghost, yeah, yeah. That's what it says. What is the largest country in South America? Ooh. Brazil. Yeah, it's hot, but. Yeah, it's Brazil. Brazil. Yeah, it's yeah, Brazil. Um, 
But they're, so they're, they're all like good, easy starting off questions. And a lot of people kind of go, oh, what is this? But then you sort of ramp it up and get a bit harder. But that one's actually a good example. What is the largest country in South America of a question that you kind of need to quantify? Because, mm. I mean, Brazil may actually be the largest country in all facets in terms of population, area, GDP, or anything else. But if it's not quite, you, you, if you, you sometimes have to really, because a lot of people, a lot of people will be like, um, do you mean largest by mass weight of humans combined by their gross domestic product over a oh, lot? Uh, because that's, that's if, it, if it, I don't know, we haven't read any rules so far. We should have come up with a set of rules of quizzes. But rule number people one. People are always more petty than you would imagine. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. Do you remember the Game of Thrones one you did? Game of Thrones one. The one you did, I believe. I didn't do Game of Thrones. I don't know enough about Game of Thrones. There's, there's the, no, kind of, yeah. the classic one that I've seen is the... And this was this was part um, pedantry on uh, Quizmaster's behalf, but he asked the question. It was from a, I think it was from a picture angle. Someone drew it, and it was one of the ones where they used to draw the pictures on the wall. Yeah. And so someone, loads of people guessed. And it was like, oh, it's a bald eagle, bald eagle, bald eagle, bald, bald eagle. Got to the end, and he was like, it's an American bald eagle. If you've written bald eagle, you're not getting it. And people were like, what? No way. <laughs> It's like American Bald Eagle Quizmaster's always right. Was that uh, John Burney Charles? No, it was Sam Bradbury. Sam Bradbury. Ah, yeah. oh, right. Yeah, yeah. That. No, Sam lent me some of these quiz books. Actually, that Mastermind one is one of his. So yeah, you do have to be careful with those. And one I actually did once. I did. Um, it was a lateral thinking one, and that said, lateral thinkings are like cryptic crossword type clues that you use to spell out names of famous people or something like that, or, or bands. And one of the ones that I did. Uh, I said that the clue was Ferris Girl. Ferris Girl, that's the name of a band. What would that be? Any guesses? I think you were both there, actually. But basically, the answer that I had for Ferris Girl was Metallica. Metallic, her. Metallica. Oh, yeah. yeah. Ferris. Ferris as in... I was thinking Ferris Wheels. No, yeah, Ferris as in Metallica, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. But everyone else wrote down Iron Maiden. Which, Which was is better. better. Yes, yeah, better than the answer that, that I yeah. had. So I was like, <laughs> fair enough, that is a better answer than I did. So I gave everyone points for that. So yeah, I have to be on careful on that one. But either way, uh, yes, yeah, so uh, so round one, uh, round one would be pictures, round two, generally general knowledge. And yeah, just make it easy as shit, really. Um, I've got one question in mind for it. Uh, what's the rhyme slang for stairs? What's the cockney rhyme in slang for stairs? Apples and pears? Yeah. Well, I didn't know that. Again, again, that's yeah. You've got to be careful with stuff like that yeah. because if you get someone who's actually a Cockney, they might go, "Well, actually, apples and pears is more a congregation of Lionel Blairs, which is your flares on your trousers." And then they might, yeah. You, but if from, that if someone from London, if that doesn't happen, and Quizmaster is all right, but yeah. if that doesn't happen, it's also a good one because you can kind of work it out. Mm. You know, you're so, not just sad they don't. Uh, so yeah, rule number one is that people will always be more petty and more pedantic than you think. Rule number two, Quizmaster is always right. That's always a good one. Stick to your guns. Yeah. Um, obviously, if you're saying things, if you're saying, when did Adolf Hitler die? 1948, you say that's the answer. And you try and stick with that, and people will be like, well, it's just patently not true. Like, so you've got to do your research a bit, yeah. I mean, if you do too much of that. But um, yeah, so there's got to be a bit of teacher control in the class at some points. So yeah, general knowledge, that's fine. We can smash that out. Um, do 10 questions on that. That's all good. So I've got general knowledge in there. And then after general knowledge, I think you can start to... Um, Have a specialist more, subject round. Yeah, but also yeah. more of your character in there. If you want yeah. to, you know, something you perhaps know a little bit about, mm. then you probably enjoy it more. Um, I mean, which might be problematic for you because you're thick as shit and don't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> Well, wrestling, Lord of the Rings, <laughs> and Pokemon. <laughs> See, know, know your audience, they're not going to know about Pokemon. <laughs> I'm too old for Pokemon. <laughs> but that is that is good when you when you if you come down to like a specialist round as well. Yeah. So if you have like a, a so ra round three, yeah, I would usually do round three. I'd either do lateral thinking or I would do a specialist round. Um, and the specialist round, Lord of the Rings is actually one of the few from popular culture that I that think you can get away with because it's so grand. I mean, like, the other day someone said to me, um, could you do, uh, so someone asked me, uh, next time Rich, can you do a, a, a Big Bang Theory, um, uh, like, round? Oh, I hate that show. Um, well, that's the thing, I, I love it, and it is an immensely huge television show. It's, it's one of the biggest you know, that's ever been recorded, but still, it's not very big to, I think, 
friends, you could do that. You could do yeah. friends or the Simpsons. They're generally big enough that there's so much global impact that everyone would know about it. Yeah. That's, that's kind of fine. Unless it's around that, like, the whole quiz, like, from the last time, has requested and said, can we do a round on blah, 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 blah. So, yeah, I mean, I did one, the last specialist one I did was space. Yeah. So, I think the first question was, what was the name of the space station that was launched by the Russians in 1986? Space. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Any guesses? Did it begin with P? No. Did it begin with A? No. B? Fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> this is the kind of thing you get with quizzes. No, Mir. Ah, Mir, the space station. Well, there was a date on that as well. That was another, because I don't know how many space stations the Russians launched in 1986, but I think it was February 20th. So you, you put the specific dates in, that's all good. Uh, like another one on that run was, uh, what was the the, the the black hole that was photographed with the Event Horizon Telescope? What was the name of the galaxy it was at the center of? I remember that. You've had that as a question before, haven't you? Uh, no, Graham asked it as a question. And I got it right. And I was being really pedantic about it. No, no, because no, Graham asked the question, what was it they took a picture of? And the answer was a black hole. But I was pedantic and I was like, do you want the name of the black hole or what? The, the, it just is a black hole. Oh, my house phone's ringing. Um, is that normal? House phone? Yeah, God. Ain't I old. What year am I in? Yeah, I always answer. 1991. <laughs> but yeah, so, um, yeah, specialist rounds. Have to be specialist, but actually also have to be quite broad. I feel like the rounds in Hobbit and things like that is that that generation would have definitely have read things like that. Yeah, um, or, you yeah, know, at least have the opportunity to do it. It's, it's, like, it's really hard to tell because it's. Definitely escalated in popularity since the films yeah. came out. Mm. It's become more part of popular, popular culture, I think. But even before films, like my mum would be like, yeah, no, it's cool, we had to read The Hobbit and stuff. But that said, still, those films are coming up for 20 years old now. Yeah. So, you know, if you haven't seen them, like... You must see them. Yeah, basically. Um, yeah, yeah, we're on the fence on that one. <laughs> um, that's one of the other things, actually, which is really good in quizzes, is don't, like... Um, you, you can't ever really have prejudice against what is or isn't cool. I find that especially with the music round. When you play, like, I, I played, um, you're, you're just disagreeing with me from the start to finish, aren't you? <laughs> I remember on the music round, I played Carly Rae Jepsen, Call Me Maybe. Yeah, which is an awesome song, so I wouldn't have a problem with that. I, yeah, it, yeah, but a lot of people don't think it's an awesome <laughs> song. A lot of people think it's an annoying piece of pop, yeah, trash. Annoying piece of pop trash. And here we are, I'm right in the middle, so I have to be relatively indifferent about it um, but yeah um, so yeah so uh, round three specialist round um, yeah you could, do you want to do any Lord of the Rings I was thinking of yeah yeah do Lord of the Rings Lord of the Rings okay right that's that's your or maybe do like I don't know 80s pop culture or something it's I'd still say this is a tricky one because if you've never if you're not sure of your audience I still think Lord of the Rings might be a bit hard yeah, yeah. so, so like, make the questions easy actually I, twice I've been given a Star Trek round, one time by Matthew Abbas, who is a Star Trek fan, yeah, and he wrote a really yeah. good one, mm. which I got 10 out of 10 on. One you wrote, and you don't know anything about Star Trek, and all the questions you picked were so difficult, so I think knowing the subject matter actually might be the difference between making yeah. it yes. accessible yeah, yeah. and making it just completely random. Yeah. You, know, you don't know how common that knowledge is within the pool of Lord of the Rings fans or Star Trek. Yeah, that one was like, what was the brand of beer that Kirk and Janeway drink in whatever, blah, blah, blah. And it was just... It wasn't Janeway, because Kirk and Janeway have never met. Nerd. So, yeah. Um, what do you want to do, Lord of the Rings? Or, uh, 80s culture? That, that is a lot more broad and could just be, you know... Yeah. Yeah, yeah let's do 80s culture. Yeah. yeah. Cool. All right. <laughs> da, da, da. 80s culture. Okay, so what I do when I get to round number four now is oh, buy. I have an idea for this one. Okay, well, it's kind of plagiarizing your. <laughs> that's fine. Hey, <laughs> hey, do you know what? With with quizzing and pub quiz writing, there's sort of. I don't know if there's much in terms of plagiarism that you can. Because you know, all the time you're asking questions about copyrighted subjects and other kinds of things like that. But. You like like all good writers borrow from other writers, and most of them acknowledge that. Um, and I think you know, I've, I mean, the lateral thinking round that I do every week now is without question borrowed from Matt Abbas, and he does his one, and it's it's very very good. That um, said, though, one of our friends, Graham, probably does 
quite a unique couple of rounds because he does a kazoo round. Yeah. And a charades and round. And the charades round, yeah, which, yeah. You know, but that's not for everyone. It is, it's unusual. But the, the, the thing about that is because it's Graham, everyone seems to enjoy it. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Everyone yeah. really, because he's, he's so inoffensive, uh, at the same time so uh, colourful and characterful that it actually comes off really, really well. So, yeah. But what I usually do for round four is anagrams. Yeah. Uh, or recently I've done song abbreviations, so just abbreviating song titles. That's always been a good thing to do. Um, so... What was uh, your... Uh, yeah, what did you have? Well, having place names in Cornwall, but obviously just changing them. Anagrams of place names. Yeah. yeah. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. And again, for your clientele over at the Castaways, that could be really good. Yeah. Um, and and yeah, that is one that I found a lot of people when you when you finally read them out, they go, oh yes, Elogan Highway. Uh, because again, they're they're gettable. You know, they're yeah. not requiring some innate knowledge. You just have to be all right at anagrams. Particularly, if, you know, there's quite a few places in Cornwall that have got Z's in as well. So if it's got a Z, yeah. that's a really good starting point for Peter Bell to work Crazy out. Crazy Beebles. Zella. Zella. Pendulums. Yeah. Mm. Pendulums. Um, yeah, maybe. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, they're good ones. But again, the, the, the worst thing that you can kind of do in that instance is what I've done a few times, which is to write really obscure questions for someone that I know is going to be there. Um, like I, I've, I've written things that I thought only Colin or Jenny might get, and the worst thing is when they don't show up. And then like, <laughs> so, but I've had to do the opposite sometimes when Jenny, I know Jenny's come coming. I have to make sure that I don't just fall into the mode of trying to get challenge her with questions. Yeah, because I know she's going to get them because she gets all of them. Mm. So I have to go totally left field. Yeah. Um, so again, it's just working to your audience. Yeah, absolutely. So, okay, round four, Cornish place names then? Let's yeah. do that. Now, again, what I do with this... That's a really good one. What? Cornish place names. Yeah. Uh, yes, there we go. So what I do with um, the anagrams round, I found mm. when you do an anagrams round, if you read it out to people, so you have an anagram or something like um, Old West Action, um, which uh, is an anagram of a famous, famous actor, you read that out, and then you've got ten, nine more of them to do. Mm. By the end of it, people are walking into the pub wondering if you're doing a seance, because everyone is dead silent, <laughs> trying to work out what the fuck it is you've just said. And they're going, oh, what is it that? <laughs> and they're speaking so quiet, because that's the worst thing of the, the sort of the, the um, oh, what's the word for it? The sort of ongoing effect of people talking quieter at a quiz, because they don't want anyone else to hear them. If there's no background chatter, they have to talk even quieter, so that no one hears the answers they're saying. Um, but with the anagrams especially, it requires so much brain thought, people just sit there staring at a page. So what I've done to counter that now, is I print out the anagrams, yeah. stick them on the wall, and say, right, they're on the wall now, and at the same time, we're gonna have a break. So that you don't have to listen to me saying them, you can take the picture and go back and do it at your own speed, speed and your own will, and it's not just so dead and quiet and stuff, because it, it literally feels like exam conditions. Yeah. Because um, people are just trying their hardest to work them out. Oh, by the way, Old West Action? Anyone got that yet? Oh, I wasn't thinking about it. And it's a uh, uh, famous film actor. And there's a clue in that as well. Uh, Clint Eastwood. Clint Eastwood. I was about oh, to say well answer in the comments, but yeah, wow. Clint Eastwood, Old West Action. Um, <laughs> So yeah, that, I'd always suggest that because the other good thing about both the picture round mm -hmm. and the anagrams round that I do when I print them out and stick them on the wall, it gets people out of their chairs yeah. and <clears throat> you'll get people hanging around at the thing going, God, I wonder what that is. And even some little camaraderie between the teams are kind of like, oh, and I think I know what that is. And they go, oh, do you? And so yeah, it's kind of, yeah. a little good thing like that. So that's, you don't have to do that, but it's, it's just an idea. So Cornish place names, right, moving on, round five. Now generally I do, I should have said at the start, generally I do like seven rounds. Yeah. Uh, which comes to a total of 80 points. Which it sounds I, like a lot. <clears throat> one thing to mention though is that I think the length of a quiz is quite important. Yes. A quiz that's too long is just unbelievably boring. Yeah. And what you'll find is that you'll get, you'll have re uh, read out all the questions, then you've got to have a break for people to like, you know, finalise them. And then everyone's got to mark, and then you've got to do the scores. So if you don't yeah, watch, yeah. you'll end up running over massively. Oh yeah. And I've done that several times. Um, so actually, <laughs> having quite a short and concise quiz mm. is probably good enough for everyone because mm. by the end, if you don't do that, you're just thinking, oh, okay. Yeah, and my, my quizzes usually will start at eight o'clock. I'll have finished asking all the questions by nine, yeah. or ten past nine, including the music round, 
And then, because then it takes you, because then you realize to actually go through the answers, you have to read the whole quiz again. You have to read it all out again, which is, you're not giving pauses and waiting for things, you are rattling through them. But still, you're thinking, you know, maybe 10 seconds per question. If you've got 80 questions, that's 800 seconds, which is about, I don't know, 11, 12 minutes. Mm. Um, which if you do really quickly, is fine. It doesn't count in for time. If you get to a question and someone goes, oh, but what about, what about, and then you have to stop and talk about that. Um, and then we're doing the scores, because when people hand back their papers to you, they usually look like they've been through some kind of hedge creating machine and they've been scribbled on in weird ways. Hedge like, creating machine. I couldn't think what to say about how like, <laughs> it's, it looks like they've drawn like some kind of Ouija board on there and some of them have got pentagrams and, and, and you're trying to find the actual flipping like final score. Which even now, I say, I really clear, I say, right, everyone, at the end, now we're done, please write a final score. And a team name. At the top. Yeah, and a team name as well, people forget that as well. So, yeah, it can, I mean, it can take you, like, easily half an hour, if not 45 minutes, to just do the answers and the scores. So, and, and get people to swap their papers over. Um, so that's why, I, yeah, you don't want more than seven or maybe eight rounds, I don't think. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but with this, you know, so picture round goes up straight away and it's just like, right, do that at your own will. And round four for me, the anagrams round, that was also like at its own will, really. So that's kind of fine. Um, and uh, then, yeah, you've got the music round, uh, and then you've just got four other sort of spoken rounds. Uh, so we now go on to round number five. Round number five, which uh, for me is usually the lateral thinking. Yeah. Um, whether you want to do them or not is. Uh, I won't confuse them too much. It's. It, it is a tough one, but weirdly, I've, I've, because I remember when Matt first started doing the lateral thinking, I was like, God, I wish I could think of something like that. I now seem to manage to think up 10 every week, really without too much fail. Like I did, um, this week I did lateral thinkings were uh, cities, um, uh, cities around the world, and, and a lot of them were quite easy. So like one of them was just a large envelope. Manila. Manila, there you go, that's one city. Uh, what was the other one? Uh, Mr. Poitier or Mr. Lumet? Sydney. Sydney, yes, they're both Sydneys, there you go. So that's another lateral thing one there. Uh, my other favorite one, one of the good ones, a uh, thousand kilos of laundry. Kilos Washington. Of Washington, <laughs> yes, a ton of washing. Uh, offal pit, offal pit. Liverpool. Whoa. Liverpool, there you go. Yeah, they do make you groan and that's funny. It's like a pantomime bit of stuff like that. So they are relatively easy to think about if you get to put the right subject matter on it. But I think you've used Washington before. I used it as George Washington. Yeah. yeah. It was uh, a boy and a thousand kilos of laundry. Uh, so yeah, which is George, boy George, George Washington. Yeah. There we go, yeah. Um, but yeah, right, so if you don't want to do that, that's fine. You can just do another, um, like another um, specialist round. So, yeah. um, yeah, which could be you know, slightly more specialist in 80s culture um, or something along those lines. It doesn't, I mean, these are just the quizzes that I do. I went to a pub quiz in Taunton well, about a year ago with my brother and I went in and the guy was like, hello everyone, we're doing the pub quiz. And we're like, yeah, we all got our papers. We gave him a quid and stuff and we all sat down. And then he goes, right, so uh, let's get started with the quiz. And this is literally what he did. Question one, Los Angeles in which US state? And you go, okay. And then he starts the next one. Uh, who is Bart Simpson's younger sister? Oh God, I haven't thought of the first one yet. A, a banshee is a type of what? What is the largest country in South America? What category of book? And he literally, almost at that speed, just read through fucking questions. Um, and the quiz was done in about 10 minutes. You know, it was about <laughs> 60 questions in about 10 minutes. And I was like, Christ, I can't remember any of these. Um, so pacing is important, but also, it was just 60 questions on general knowledge. Have you ever been to one where you get the uh, questions and they're written down? I've seen that as well. They, what? Do, they just, Give them to you. Oh, right, yeah. Oh, wow. So what's the point? So not yeah. even reading anything no, else? There's no potential for any audience participation or yeah. know, anything like that. It's just odd and everyone mm. just sits there and says, oh, yeah. So, <clears throat> have you... So don't do that. Yeah, don't do that. Yeah. Be a host. Yeah, yeah. And you'd be a good host. <clears throat> you normally do, especially, well, you normally do, um, what's it called, lateral thinking and then you do another, um, Special knowledge? And then another general knowledge round, yeah. yeah. And then we to the music. But yeah. Oh, another good one you can do for stuff like this, if you're looking for something which isn't just another general knowledge one, film quotes, opening lines of songs. Yeah. Uh, I try not to do too many music ones because the music round is so big at the end. It's not long, it's just got a lot of points to it. But film quotes is always a good one. That's really fun. Um, 
or, or, or quotes from famous people. So a quotes round is always a, a good one. Depending um, on your audience, you could do uh, bus routes. You know, if they're really old, then they might have bus, pa bus passes, so they're really familiar. Like, oh, the 35 goes to Helford Passage. Stuff like that. <laughs> I just saw a bus, so uh, just popped into my You're just saying things you say. <laughs> do you love lamp? <laughs> uh, Onions. Um, <laughs> But yeah, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I'd say a quotes round would be a good one. Um, yeah. But uh, I would say a bus routes one would perhaps not be. not be a good one. Um, but yeah, but if, do you want to do a quotes one? Or? Do a quotes one. Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll yeah. yeah. we can figure that one out. Uh, what can we screw over and do the London Cockney rhyming slag? Oh yeah. yeah. The the thing is, I think something good like that, which is. Um, I don't know, something, mm -hmm. lateral thinking is always good because it's impossible to Google them, basically. Yeah. Um, or something like that. So they, they, you give examples of something and then they have to try and work out what the answer is. Or uh, connect the words thing. So what colour links um, admiral, card and flag? Red. Red, yeah. Red admiral, red card, red flag. So um, yeah, there's this thing that, and you can do linking things like that. Um, but yeah, I generally say quotes is quite a good one. And then round six, by the time he gets this, it's just a filler round, uh, which I'd say is... A lot of people do something like art and literature. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or geography. Yeah. Something along, along those lines. Or food and drink, even. Yeah. I quite like food and drink now. I've, uh, I've now never now. done a food and drink round, and I've <clears throat> never done a sport round. Yeah, sport um, is divisive, definitely. Yeah. It's... Because it's really hard. And this thing, you think football is probably the biggest sport in this country. Yeah. The most big cultural impact. But even if I said... You know, who is the current manager of Manchester United? I would never. I have no idea. Or Leigh Gunnar Solskjaer. That's, I don't, I don't even think you just said words. <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, so, and that, that's like, you know, the biggest club and the biggest team and the biggest sport and neither of us know. So as, as a football fan, when I've done uh, sport <coughs> football questions in a lot of them, you struggle, it might be like, who's the most, uh, which goalkeeper had the most appearances in the Champions League? And it's like, that's impossible. Unless you're a massive fan, so yeah, yeah, I agree. Sports rounds should be banned. But again, if you end up having lots <clears> of you know people there, then yeah. But then it, the, sports can be good um, in the sense of like you can you can ask questions about obscure sports and weird sports and stuff like that, um, which uh, and, uh, which are very general. Um, so like, which sport involves the use of a curved wicker throwing implement in order to hurl balls at people? Lacrosse. You know, that's they have a little net thing. No, it's, a, it's a sport. It's called high oh, yeah. It's 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 apparently one of the most dangerous sports in the world because they have these these big curved like things. They're like that. And they're like an extension of your arm, which is made of wicker, and they, they put a ball in it. And as you flick it like that, uh, something yeah. about the geometric action can accelerate the ball like a hundred miles an hour. And they're like shot put balls, so they hit you and you die basically. Um, so yeah. That's another option. Yeah. But what was your idea for round six? What were you, you said you were going to do something like? Um, I was kind of thinking going to the music round. I don't know, because obviously I've got like a don't know, chill out gap. Yeah. To do this in. Mm. You were, if you want, were you, were you want to go straight to the music round? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I haven't seen Mark do one yet, so I wanted to bring one in. Oh, so, you, so you're you going to do only six rounds? I don't know how many Mark does, but. I would, I'd stick another general knowledge yeah. one in, and, and the thing is, stick another general knowledge one in, and if you get there, and Mark's sort of tapping his watch going, come oh, on, wrap it up, then you just don't have to do it. Yeah, you just, yeah, you just ditch that round. Yeah. I've done that before. Um, I've done it before where we came in, and I'd written a Harry Potter round. Uh, no, I hadn't, I'd written a, um, oh, I can't remember what the round was, but it was something, and, and, and basically, people came in, I looked at them, I was like, I just they're not gonna get this. And so, so I gave people the choice. I think you've done one um, where people had requested it and then they didn't actually turn up. So you yeah, didn't do it. yeah, yeah. It was something it was like Firefly that. or something like that. Something along those lines, yeah. Um, <laughs> and so I just went back through other quizzes that I had and just used another round from that. But yeah, the, the, stick another general knowledge one in. Because yeah, um, after uh, I always call it general knowledge again. After you've done like those ones, if no one's got like any of round three, four, or five, and they're going, "Oh God, I wish there was just some more general knowledge," then the general knowledge can be quite nice. Yeah. Plus, it can be anything like you know when I'm yeah. saying iron lich or food and drink. You can bosh some of those questions. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, it doesn't you know it doesn't have to be. And you can make just it so easy. Stuff. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and then fun fact for you: bananas contain 0.0. 
No, no, one percent radiation. Really? Yeah. Yes, that's why they're so dangerous when you stick them up your bum. Exactly. That's why you stick them in a fruit bowl and the fruit. I know they the have like anti carcinogens in them. Mm. Like they like if the, like one banana can basically cancel out the effect of one cigarette, essentially. Which is why I always try and have a banana before a cigarette. Um, I don't. If I did that, I'd probably die from potassium poisoning before <laughs> nicotine killed me. Um, but either way, uh, yeah, and then we get to round number seven, which generally I always make the music round, um, yeah. which is a good one. And um, yeah, I mean, if I just look through some of the music rounds I've got on this phone, which I should have quite a few of, um, you, again, generally, you want to sort of pick like something for everyone. So um, if I go, right, 19th of May. So what have I got? Um, Duran Duran, uh, The Hives, Lamar, someone from whatever the fuck, um, and then uh, Lowrider, Wheatus, Teenage Dirtbag, Phil Collins, a bit of Travis, uh, Rage Against the Machine, The Car Wash, and then uh, Public Service Broadcasting. Um, so there's, there's a really good spread in there, I think, of sort of stuff from uh, I, I tend to put more 80s stuff in there, mm. not just because people who were born in like the 60s and 70s deserve to know more, but because actually, if you got all of us to start naming songs, I think we'd run out of present day songs, like from the last 10 years, yeah. quite quickly. But 80s songs, they're so embedded in popular culture, um, there's so much of it. Um, I mean, yeah, and, and what I've done, and this is if you're writing regular quizzes, I, oh, I actually got a list on this phone, um, is I've just got a list of my notes <coughs> of every time I hear a song when I'm out and about, I write it down. Yeah. I once wrote all the music round for a quiz I was doing, sat in the oddies, because what Jay was playing, I was just like, oh, a bit of Buffalo Springfield, yeah, yeah, happy days. So, okay, well, yeah, a bit of Rage Against the Machine, sure. A good technique, I think, is to, um, because it doesn't have to be super easy, but if you use bands that people have heard of, yeah. and the song perhaps they wouldn't have done, it's maybe less well known. At least when you say it at the end, it was, you know, Bruce Springsteen or something like that. They go, mm. oh yeah, well obviously no Bruce Springsteen. Yeah. Silly me. Yeah. But that, that's maybe <laughs> a decent approach. You're kind of lucky where you were doing that quiz because you don't get anyone just wandering through really. It's a bit more mm. of a destination thing. And yeah. one thing you find if, if drunken people rock up part way through, not only could they end up uh, getting so drunk that they fall over, break a table, smash, smash a glass a into someone's ankle and smash a window, which happened to us one time. Yes. Um, not, we didn't, we weren't the smashers. No, um, yeah. Uh, but also, you sometimes get people walking in and yeah. uh, shouting out the answers, which is one of the most frustrating do, things. Do you know what? I, that brings us brilliantly <laughs> on to the next thing that I was going to say, which is a lovely segment of this video, which I like to call shit that people say at quizzes. <laughs> and there's a recurring things that you get at quizzes, all that, and, and you all know, and, and one of them is, yeah, the, the person that thinks they're a real clever dick by saying, the shouting out the answers. And it's very difficult because in this day and age, if you just say to someone, if someone shouts out the answers and you go, sorry, mate, do you mind not doing that? Like. If they're doing it in the first place, they're going to be enough of a dick already that they're going to ignore what you say. So I found belittling them works really well. But again, you, ha it's, you, you kind of are like a comedian almost when you're standing up there because you, if you take if, if people heckle you, you have to try and give yeah. something back. And you because uh, before now, I've gone to Matt uh, who runs the pub and just gone, can you get that guy out of here? And he's kind of like, no, it's your job. You sort it out. And I'm like. All right, um, but like before now, there's what I remember. There's someone who was at the quiz, and they were they were just shouting out the answers, and and I was like, do you know what? I I think I can see what it is that you're doing. I think I can see what you're doing. You see, we're doing a quiz here, and you, I'm asking questions, and you're saying the answers out loud, so everyone else gets to hear them, and then it ruins what they're doing for the quiz. You you must think you're the funniest guy in this room, don't you? You must think you're like at the cutting edge of guerrilla comedy, just <laughs> saying all these funny things. You're giving yourself a little cuddle there, just, and the thing is, you think that, whereas at the moment, everyone else thinks you're a dick. And you do something like that, and it can, it, one, hopefully it gets everyone else to laugh, and then gets them to sort of think, oh yeah, actually I've made a few bad life choices yeah. that have led to this point. I mean. Not classically bad life choices. I mean, heckling a small pub quiz in a Cornish town is not exactly, you know, uh, requiem for a dream or anything. But <laughs> it's it's you know it's it, it is good to sort of bring things out of it. So yeah, be 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 wary of that. Um, other things that shit that people say at quizzes. 
I think just drunk people in general can get quite obnoxious. Yeah. You know, so it's, to a certain extent, heckling of the quiz master is expected and encouraged. I think you know if you're standing up there, I think it's, yeah, it definitely is at your quiz. Um, but there does become a point where it's just annoying. Um, yeah. And uh, as as an addition to that, at the end when you're reading out the answers, people that are overly combative about what is. Uh, it's just a pub quiz, you know, yeah. you don't get so aggressive yeah. about the fact that one answer wasn't what you thought it was. Yeah. There's just no need for you to get upset over a bottle of wine or 20 quid or whatever it is. And, and people really, well, some people, not because it's a bottle of wine or 20 quid, it's because it's their pride on the line almost, yeah. and it's winning is winning. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what, Trump. One thing that I don't know how rife it is, and I think people maybe assume that it is more so than you than it actually is, but cheating. I don't know mm. that people are that fussed. Yeah. Um, I think people do go there to have a good time and just, you know, have a bit of a jolly and don't take it that seriously. It's just when the sort of the drunken competitiveness comes in yeah. at the end that people start to get a bit arsy. Yeah. Other Smash um Smash other shit that people say at quizzes, one of my personal uh favourites or, or least favourites. Um do we get bonus points for <laughs> fuck off is basically my yeah, quick and solid that. response. Do we get bonus points for? Uh, it's like when you say, "Who directed so and so?" I'm like, do we get bonus points for if we tell you who his mother-in-law is? No, you get nothing. You get minus points for that, and people will be very sulky in that regard. So a lot of people pub quizzes. They the thing is they so desperately. It's the same as people shouting out the answers. They desperately want people to know that they're clever, yeah. um, which is very sad. Because there are so many better ways in the day and age to display your intelligence rather than just being a dick and a quiz. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what you are up against at times. Sorry, did you have some input? No, I was just realised that this is probably the worst thing to do as we're recording. Eating a bag of noisy crisps. Yeah, um, but you know, well, it's, 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 a, it's a vlog about quizzing, not about you know, how to make. And no, I don't think I have anything else to add. I mean, it is just generally, yeah, that's, that's generally. Uh, as, as a, a, a good one is to yeah, be aware of those things. Other than that, I do know um, once that at the, I think it was at the Quayside in town, um, I know that someone got into a fight with the quiz master because it, it, <laughs> I think they marked, the quiz master marked the sheet wrong and it just went ballistic. It escalated. There. Um, but you know, the, the place that you were doing that, you went. You I, don't, I don't see that happening. <laughs> because my employer will be there in the quiz as well. One thing I would always say as well, when you, when you, when you get down to the, uh, the, the questions and answers, so at the start of every quiz, I always say the quiz master is always right, even when I'm wrong. I've done my very best to research all these questions and answers, best I can. Inevitably, there will be some slip ups. And just, you know, the thing to do is when people will say, oh, what about this? I mean, like, the one I had the other day was uh, in the landmarks round for the, the pictures. There was uh, La Sagrada Familia, which wow. is a big cathedral. It, do, you, do you know what that is? Yeah, I've been there. Oh, right, there we go. Uh, it's, it's a big cathedral in Barcelona, and so another team had written down Barcelona Cathedral. Which uh, is different. Have, which is diff Yeah, but I was like, is that technically correct? Mm. And then I had to say no, because I was like, I don't know if there are other cathedrals in Barcelona. Uh, and they got a bit like, oh, but it is Barcelona Cathedral. And, and this, that's the other thing to worry about, is some people will tell you They'll, they'll try and be like, oh, it is that. And you're like, oh. But the great thing is, these days, I mean, I always read my quiz off an iPhone. So I'm just like, mm, Wikipedia, blah, 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 blah. No, you're wrong. And you go with like reasonable doubt of, because I, I know people sort of go, oh, you can't say what well, Wikipedia is right or wrong and stuff. And it's like, it's, again, it's a quiz. It's yeah. like, yeah, go with that. The other good thing I always say is um, when you're doing the answers and you obviously get the other teams to mark each other and stuff, at the end of it, I always say, don't give your papers back to the teams you got them from because they'll always want to look through it and be pernickety. Like, just give them straight to you. Mm. Just get them to bring the, the papers straight up to you. So there's, uh, yeah. It's basically reducing the amount of potential for people to be total knobs. Yeah, that is, that is essentially. And, and I think that's a good rule for dealing with the general public. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, yeah, that's a pretty good one. So, um, yeah, to recap, um, I think, yeah, uh, have a nice little structure for your quiz like what we've got uh, here. I don't, you probably, oh, I can't remember turn it around, but we've gone, what well, we've done, round one, famous landmarks in pictures, round two, general knowledge, round three, 80s culture, round four is Cornish place names, which I think is going to be the anagrams thing, round five, quotes, round six, general knowledge, uh, which can be a burn around if you want it, and then round seven, music. And 
just being able to read those out at a decent sort of speed and pace. And if you've never done it before, practice it after you've written yeah. it and all that. Practice reading it and then pausing for like a minute or so. And what I always say actually is, I'm gonna read all these questions out, I'll do them relatively quickly, but if anyone needs any repeats, I'll do them afterwards. And nine times out of 10, no one needs anything like yeah, that. You always do a little gap in between yeah. where you can go around. But don't go too fast like that quiz I described earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Along. Um, yeah, beware of dicks. Uh, generally a good rule in life in general. Um, Just imagine a roadside with that. <laughs> beware <laughs> of dicks. <laughs> Just a phallus with a giant cross. No. Um, yeah, uh, be nice to people is the other good thing. Um, yeah, because often quiz masters can end up being a bit pious and being a bit like, well, I know more than you because I'm the quiz master when actually you wrote things out of a book and put your pants on one leg at a time like everyone else. So, um, yeah. Um, yeah. Be you ready to run and jump into your trousers. I have like a Wallace and Gromit type thing <laughs> where I come through this room actually. Uh, and there's just a sort of, yeah, whatever. We're getting a bit diversion here. Um, I black looks into it. Uh, that, is, that is the way to do many things in life. Um, and uh, yeah, so have a decent structure. Uh, research your questions. Don't take shit from people. Beware of dicks. Um, get ready to say that you're wrong occasionally if there is kind of the, the thing that comes up. Um, be relatively nice to people. Remind people it's a quiz and it's just supposed to be a bit of fun. Um, and yeah, watch the time of what you're doing. If you do have to speed things up or slow things down or maybe ditch around because you're actually way behind time, then just be aware of that sort of pacing and that kind of thing. Um, and yeah, otherwise, I. Really can't think of anything else. I think that's how you write a quiz, yeah. Yeah, happy days. Well, um, from me and Colin and Max, we hope you guys have all enjoyed this. And uh, from Red, who's down here as well. Yeah. You probably can't see it, but this Rob. is uh, my new dog who's just, yeah. Hello, you're doing very good, aren't you? Uh, we hope you guys enjoyed this video. I might actually go and film some of a quiz happening. I might go and film Max's quiz tomorrow, actually, um, and see how it goes. No, YouTube will turn up ideas. Yeah, um, and uh, yeah, and show you guys actually what it's like you know, doing a quiz as it were. And yeah, if you like this, please subscribe. Um, and uh, yeah, next video coming soon. All right, bye.